me, you would, if you would, to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. Let me read a few verses with you. Come on. 1 Samuel 16. I had to watch it last night. I got to take my kids to the Big Ten Championship game in Annapolis. And, uh, and so about the first quarter, I said, I better just, I just better be a quiet fan or I won't have any voice to preach tomorrow morning. <clears throat> but anyway, thanks be unto God. We've been talking about the anointing. The anointing, as I done mentioned, I done started preaching, if you didn't notice. The anointing of God is that part of God that's in and comes up on man, accomplishing only the things that God himself can do. I said last week, the anointing is, when people talk about what is it to anoint. To, to, to anoint means you're going to put something on. You're going to smear it over you and rub it in. This morning, I have about a three and a half ounce bottle of anointing oil I'll be taking with me to Kenya. Uh, they like it there. They'll fill up some small bottles I've taken in the past. And uh, uh, they like that. To be anointed, amen, to be anointed. Now, they can't get it like we do here. But good anointing oil is not cheap. These little bottles, you know, eight, nine, ten dollars $10. They're not cheap. But good anointing oil, uh, people use it, but they like to put it on. Now, uh, I've heard Dad tell stories about, I mentioned people putting their hands in a bowl and, and putting it on your head and it runs down. You know, nowadays it did that to me. It run to my suit quick. I have no hair to stop it. Uh, so, uh, but anyway... So the anointing is something that's on, smeared over, and rubbed in. So I believe God wants, God wants it all over us. Amen? God wants it all over us. And uh, it's amazing how people go to the beach. They want to make sure they put that lotion everywhere. Come on, smear it everywhere. Rub it in. Rub it in. I want that sun. I want that sun. Come on, sun. Come on, sun. Burn me. Burn me. Uh, no, no, no. But uh, so that's what it is. I, I, I want the son of heaven. I want Jesus Christ. I want him all over me. I want smeared everywhere with him, and I want it rubbed in. Amen? And you know why it rubbed in is important? So it don't come off. It doesn't come off. It's there. Amen? So here we go. We're going to talk about, I said we'll mention something about the, somebody being anointed with oil here, and this is what it is. Now the Lord, verse 1, and the Lord said to Samuel, the prophet, how long will you mourn for Saul? Quit crying over Saul. See, Samuel had a heart that loved God. Samuel, the things of God, he valued. Samuel valued the things of God. How many knows you've got to do that? Don't ever disvalue the things of God. Well, I've heard it. I've seen it. So what? So what? You know, on this trip, there's probably going to be a movie that I'm going to watch. I watched. I watched. I, I watched Scott. He usually sets, you know, adjacent to across the row of us, we can have exits, you know, uh, end seats. He'll look over and see me watching Facing the Giants or, or uh, <laughs> no, uh, Facing the Giants or, or you know, uh, uh, something like that, uh, The Blind Side. And he'll watch that and, uh, and he'll see the part of it and he'll start looking at me because he'll see me start going. Because it still gets my heart. I love the stories where people receive it. Especially facing the giants when that woman could not get pregnant. And, and in the end where God shows up and she said, I'm going to serve you regardless of what happens. And, and it still gets me every time because that's the God I serve. Amen. <laughs> I love that. It still gets me. Don't ever get to the place where the things of God don't move you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Some of you guys need some spiritual x lax You got to get things moving in your life. You need some spiritual x lax Get some things moving. Come on. Quit being so clogged up. <laughs> Glory to God. <clears throat> yeah, some people are just not moved by the things of God anymore. No, you got to keep this tender. You got to keep it sensitive inside. Whatever starts messing with the tenderness and the sensitivity of your heart, stop it right now. You get it out of you. Get it out right now. Because when you allow that to happen, the enemy will show up and, you'll, and he'll come in undetected because you're no longer sensitive. You're no longer tender to it. So a lot of times we set ourselves up for the attack because we mess with the sensitivity and the tenderness of our heart. Whatever you do, guard it. That's why it says guard your heart with all diligence. 
guard it. So he said, how long are you going to keep mourning for Saul? He was stupid. I told him what to do and he didn't do it. The anointing has lifted off of him and you're going to go anoint another man. The one I choose. I've seen people that's messed up. And I cried. My good friend that I went to, uh, did his funeral and helped bury. He was one of my best friends at Ramah. Little black brother. Johnny D. Penton. A.K.A. Pee Wee. I love that boy. No one else got the keys in my car but Johnny. Uh, I, I just loved him and he walked with God and made a great impact. But the day that I knew he walked away from God and, and he wasn't with God. Thank God. I'm so thankful that uh, in his last days he was walking with God. But he got drawn up in some things. And when I heard what was going on, I laid in my bed and I wept. Because I care not just about people's income and everything else. I want to know something about your outcome in life, how you live victorious. I'd be foolish to be a preacher of the gospel if I didn't care about people's success and how they live. Use that diet. That'll help you. Go to, go to this gym. It, it, it really works. But why do we do that to people? Because we care about their success. I, 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 want this, I want it to be such a place where if you want help, come to, our, come to Kopi. There's a place where you can get help. But if we're no longer sensitive, we can't get help. Because you don't recognize it yourself anymore. Come on. How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king amongst his sons. How many knows God's not going to stop? I've had people say, you know, that guy can't do without me. Well, the truth is, naturally, some people may be in positions that works, but none of us are indispensable with God. You do it, and God will continue to anoint you. You get stuck on stupid, he'll let you go ahead and take that trail, and he'll find somebody to get the job done. But why would you want somebody else to do your job? Amen. Come on. Amen. No, we got to stay on that. we got to do what's right. And Samuel said, how can I go if Saul hears it because he's already backslidden? If Saul hears it, even though I'm a prophet, he will kill me. Isn't that a shame? But the Lord said, take a heifer with you. He's talking about a real cow here. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> that was... <laughs> I was just seeing how many people actually listen to what I say. Versus how many people just nod their head. <laughs> I'm not staying up to 2.30 anymore. It messes, it messes with me. I'm going to take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. That means you don't go pick the one you want. It doesn't matter what he looks like. Ah, this guy's educated. This guy's, this guy's got it going on. We, he should be the one. No, you don't move until I say move. So look at this. Verse 4. So Samuel did what the Lord said. Oh, isn't that a novel thought? Samuel did what the Lord said and went. To Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peacefully? Isn't that amazing that when the man of God showed up, people got real serious? How would to God that would happen again? You know, I remember growing up, certain people, I was around certain people, I'd repent 10 minutes before they showed up. Oh my God, if there's anything in me, forgive me, because if you're not, he'll reveal it. Come on. I mean, there ought to be some type of the fear of the Lord in people's lives. Why is the prophet here? Why is the man of God coming? 
And he said, no, I come peacefully. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. Cleanse yourself. That's what he's saying. Come with me to the sacrifice. Don't, don't just come dirty. Don't just become. Don't, don't come. Do something spiritually. Get yourself ready to go. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was. So it was. When, he, when they came, they, when, when they came, that he took, he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. Surely the, the one that the Lord has anointed is before me. Eliab looked apart. He looked apart. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature. Because I have refused him, for the Lord does not see as men sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. <clears throat> Amen. I'm telling you, when people come and get saved that's been in the world, tatted from earlobe to ankles, they're not going to be able to erase that. But if the heart's made new, God's still going to judge him after the heart. Amen. Everybody's not going to look like us. But Jesus died for all. Come on. Come on. He died for all. I, I, Jesus is not willing any should perish. You know, sin, as I said the other day, sin makes people stupid. Sin will make people do things that's not right. But when the light of Jesus Christ comes, they're going to, and you got to help people stay out of condemnation. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish, I wish, I wish, I, I wish I wouldn't have did this. I wish I wouldn't have entertained that. No, no, you, you, you're you going to be redeemed. Now, some people's going to continue to reject you because from the outside, you're still going to look like you, you belong to this or that. But on the inside, you still belong to heaven. Amen. You just got to know on the inside who's perpetrating and who's right. All right. So Jesse called. So Jesse called Abinadab. That's the name for your next son. <clears throat> but the Lord, uh, he called him Abinadab and, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. And then he chose, then it Shammah came. And then they just kept coming. Verse 10, thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there, and there he is keeping the sheep. I mean, we didn't figure we'd bring him in here. He's so young. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with, with bright eyes, good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. The least expected. The least expected. Then Samuel, here's the point. And Samuel took the horn of oil. He said, now take that oil. That means that oil is for the purpose that I've called it for. Take that horn of oil and anoint him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Rome. So here's what happened. Saul was still king, but David was anointed. Look how he got anointed. Something was poured on him. Took that oil. Something was poured on him. Let me tell you, God is still pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Those who welcome and allow that anointing to be upon their life, those are the ones that God will continue to do supernatural things through. Amen. So what we have to do is realize that I don't do what I do because I'm called. Many are called. Many are called but mess with the anointing. You can't be called and continue to yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness and sin. Now, the mercy of God will be there for a while. But let me tell you what. Sin separates. Sin destroys. And where people get messed up at because they can be in sin for a while before maybe some kind of a judgment happens of correction. And they start thinking it can't be so bad because there's still an anointing up on me because, you know, God must be all right with it. And people become deceived with it. Let me tell you, God chooses to use a clean heart and clean hands. Now, God will give people. He's a good God. He'll give people opportunity. He'll give you rope, so to speak. 
by the Spirit of God drawing you back in. So don't think just because lightning hasn't struck that God approves of your sin. Come on. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. And I've watched people get messed up thinking everything must be all right. Because I'm still anointed. Money's still coming to me and everything else is happening. You know, people still give, give an offering so God can't be too ticked off at me. Because he's still anointed. Let me tell you what. God anoints us, not for us. He anoints us for you. God anoints you, not just for you, but he anoints you for others. The anointing that's upon me now is not for Pastor Ken. The anointing is upon me now to teach, to help you. Amen. But when I was in this meeting uh, Thursday and Friday, the anointing that was upon Pastor Barkley wasn't just for him. The anointing upon him was for us. And God will anoint you for others. Don't mess with it. You stay sensitive to what God does. God still wants to pour out upon his people. Now, what's going to separate in these last days? Traditional worship. When I mean traditional, I'm not talking about if you're Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever. Just people going through the motions, putting in time. These last days, you've got to get off the spiritual treadmill. You know the thing you're getting ready to buy for Christmas because you're going to start a new life January 1? That will become a code rack by August. The way, the, the why, the why is excited about January 1. Planet Fitness is excited about January 1. All these people are excited because all of us resolutionary people, we're going to make New Year's resolution. We're going to go and buy their memberships and we're going to make this commitment. And in about 45 days, you're going to get up and go to the why and you're going to ask yourself why. <laughs> Come on. That's what's going to happen. So I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just going through spiritual exercise. A treadmill is you get on that thing, you can crank it up to four miles an hour, eight miles an hour, 12 miles an hour. You get on that treadmill, you'll run and sweat, run and sweat, your heart will beat, run and sweat. But when you turn it off, you're right in the same place where you got on that. You've gone nowhere. And a lot of people live on that spiritual treadmill. They work, 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 go through all the motions, but they go nowhere. It's time for us to go somewhere, and we go somewhere by the power of God, by the Spirit of God, and by the anointing of God. God still chooses to use men and women. God still chooses to anoint mankind. This, this last day is not going to be a role for the heavenly angels. They got their part to play, and they will play their part. But this is the day for the redeemed, for the righteous, for the called out one, for the ecclesia. It's time for us to rise up and say, we are the ones God placed here for this time. We are the occupying forces to make a difference. We're the occupying forces to make a difference. <clears throat> you know, in January, I forget the date. You'll, you'll get the date. Pastor Barkley's going to do that webinar again. We don't usually do it on Saturday night because we do the replay on Wednesday. But we were in a private meeting with him, and he's calling this, if you've seen this stuff, the end of the world. Some things that God has showed him is just uncanny. He said it may be the most direct webinar he's ever done. But we're not going to pacify it on Wednesday where you've got teachers here and teachers there. We're going to show this on that live Saturday night. And uh, it's going to, you know, be over by 920. And uh, so don't make excuses. Well, I went Saturday night, so I won't be in church Sunday. Hopefully what you see will make you want to get out of bed on Sunday and come to the house of God. So we're, we're not going to do it as a replay and go through it. I really believe that we're going to get hooked up to it that Saturday night. We should have the right Internet now. And we're going to see this uh, because we just got a snippet of it. But I believe in my heart that uh, wake up time. And uh, God is bringing life to people. And, and we're going to be a part of this life. Amen. amen. Say, come alive. come alive. It's time for God's people to come alive. Yes. To be quickened. Yes. He said he quickened us and made us alive. And uh, we need to be informed and know what's going on and what's happening. Amen. So allow God to anoint you. Amen. 
Allow God to anoint you. Uh, chapter 15 talks about how Saul was anointed. And then chapter 16, you, go, you, go all, you can actually go all the way back to chapter 10. But chapter 15 and 16 tells a story. You can read that. And we're not going to go through it. I want you to stand with me this morning.